I solemnly swear that I will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Hi everybody, Ron here from The Truth About Addiction. Today's guest is Reese Gordon, owner of Little Tokyo Tattoo Studio in Sydney, and a friend of mine, been a friend of mine for nearly 30 years, and uh, the only guy I've let tattoo myself and my family for the last 20 years. Not only is he a great tattooer, she's a great human being. So, uh, Reese, welcome to The Truth About Addiction, my friend. Yeah, Good to uh, see you. Thanks, Reese. Always beautiful to see yeah, you, mate. Likewise. And yeah, what a beautiful, wonderful creation you've made. Yeah, it's, it's for me, it's it, because I'm surrounded by it all the time, I kind of forget about it. But I do walk around here some nights late at night and go, how the fuck did this happen? Yeah. And it's just the evolution of if I start to make a bit more money, artists are booked or whatever, I'm like, all right, opportunity comes along. Okay, like this area. Um, I can invest in it and see where it'll go and, and go from there. Um, yeah, no, yeah. it's incredible because, you know, as you said, old friend, you know, I've known you since... Yeah, long time. 20-something yep. years, you know, like I met you at Breno's, yep. Paul Breno Studio, yep. and Breno and I were mates, and Breno was one of the few tattoos in Australia that I was getting yep. to tattoo me, and... Um, you know, we became friends. Yeah. You know, we travelled the world together. We went to yeah. New Zealand together, and uh, we went to America together. So yeah. you know, and Brano, as you know, Brano was not a very close person to get close to. He just yeah, he's hard. He, but he but at the same time, he was like a game changer and a leader in the industry. Yeah, you know, at that time, and may, maybe to break the mould, he had to be that way as well. And he was also one of the few shops that wasn't affiliated. Yep. So his attitude yep. was, this yep. is my bread and butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I remember him saying it to yep. different clubs. Yeah. You know, you might be able to come and burn me shop then, but I'll burn every yep. club the house down around, yeah. you know, like. Well, my, my first day working for him, um, I'd come back from traveling through Europe and everything, and I got a job at Crossfire, which was called Crossfire because of exactly. the wars. Yep. Um, I walked up to the shop and the front window smashed and I stepped over all the broken glass and I went, oh, good way to start work. Good good day to start work today, is it? And he goes, oh, you'll get used to it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, was a, he was a good human being. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, he was a, yeah, he, he was a good human being. Yeah. Uh, passed away with yeah. a horrible disease. Yeah. And... As we're speaking right now, yeah, I have another friend who's dying. He could even be dead right now. Wow. Yeah. I got a phone call this morning. They are at the hospital. They turned the machine off. He was taking his last breath. He's motor neuron disease. Yeah. And him and Paul are the only two people that yeah. I know that ever had it. Yeah. But this guy had another five years, so he had a really yeah. good run. But yeah. Paul's was so quick. Yeah. It was yeah. just like... V and I went and seen him. Yeah, out, out of the house. Uh, yeah. no, no, we went and seen him at the shop yeah. before he... And he said to me... I've just been diagnosed with this yep. MND. Yeah. Do you remember that, home? And I'm like, what is that? Yeah. He goes, I don't know, it made a neuron disease. Yeah. And I didn't know about it. I said, oh, yeah. And I went and Googled it. Yeah. But I was like, whoa. Within a year, he was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like it was just that quick. And then the last message I got off him, he said to me, this effing disease has now taken my voice. I can't even talk to your brother. Yeah. Then we went to the house and visited yeah. him, and yeah. it was quite it was quite sad, you yeah. know. And um, yeah, it, it went really quickly. But yeah, I um, I had a lot of time for Paul because he was a man of his word, mm -hmm. incredible artist. Yeah, he was a better tattooer yep. than he was drawer because it was yep. really humbling for him because he had to say to me, "Mate, I've got to get Tony to do the yep. drawings." Because a lot of my stuff yep. that Paul put on me, Tony Ranger actually did the yep. drawings. Yeah, you know, he said to me, "Mate." We'll get him to draw it up because he's a better drawer than I am, you know. Yeah. And, you know, the, at least he was humble enough and honest yeah. enough to, to say that, you know. Well, country boy from Griffith. Exactly. Like, you know. Yeah, exactly. And that's what he was. And he still was yeah. when he passed away. Yeah. A country boy from Griffith who'd yeah. done really well for himself, you know. He, yeah. He was a very smart businessman too. Yeah. I remember when he took Tony on and he was putting money away without Tony knowing. Yep. Yeah. yeah, wow. Did you know that story? No. Oh. But I know I bought, I got tattooed off Tony when I think I was 19 and he was apprenticing then. Yep. 
and then I got tattooed by, by Paul when I was 21. And I remember at the same time I bought some of Tony's design sheets. Yep. And I was just like, oh, I'll give you the money, Tony. He's like, no, no, I'll give it to Paul. And then I, I found out years later that Paul was, you know, looking after it because even tattoo is still today. It's easy come, easy go, yeah. you know. Well, um, Brando was really sneaky. When Tony did his original apprenticeship with him, Paul said, that's X, Y, Z, that's how many dollars you're getting. Yep. Then what they did, him and Robin, because he was so good and he was bringing so much yep. money in the shop, they were putting money aside for him without him yep. knowing it. Yeah. And it got to the point when he first ever, um, this is a story I got from Paul, he was fell in love, he was getting engaged and he yep. wanted to buy a house. And Paul gave him X amount. There's your deposit. And there's your deposit on your house. Yeah. That's your... That's your gift for yeah. what we've done. Because we yeah. we went to um, America, Greg and I, and we took a bunch of sheets, you know, yeah. Tony's sheets. And I can't remember how we took We might have take, taken 50 sheets, you know, 50 loads of sheets. Yeah. You know, and there might have been eight sheets in a, in a set. Yeah. And um, it was pretty incredible because there was Philip Loose sheets there. There was, you know, Rollo sheets there. There yeah. was all these sheets there. Yeah. It just got smashed. Yeah. Everyone wanted this this young kid from yep. Australia's yeah. grey work. It was like, who's this kid? You know, it was like, they did, they just smashed it. It was at yep. um, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. They just smashed it. It was just like out of control. You just couldn't believe it. It was. Well, Tony had like what the, whether it be Dungeons and Dragons background or the comic influence, yep. all that stuff. And it was so different to. Mm stereotypical tattoo stuff at the time. And we used to say, I'm, I'm glad I don't have his dreams. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my God. Because there's some dark stuff. But there. he's the most humble, quiet guy, yeah. Tony. But, yeah. yeah, there's some, what is it, still waters run deep? That's it. Very deep I have a Tony. massive <laughs> dragon, medieval dragon yep. here that Tony drew up. And that's a funny story. You know the story, he, they did him black and grey, Breno. Ah. And then I come back and said, I don't like it. Yep, yep. Because I'm all coloured. Yep. You know, the only yep. thing I've got black and grey is um, Jack Rudy. Yep. And I come back and I said to Breno, mate, you know, I love the tattoo, but I don't like Yeah. It. He's like, Are you serious? I said, no. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't suit. It doesn't fit. Yep. And, uh, and he did it in green. He did a green yep. over it, a green with a real lot of shade and green and white. Yeah. And, and he said, Mate, we've just created new tattoos. There you go. And he started doing tattoos like that. He started doing yep. the black and gray, and then coming over the top and culling yep. it. Yeah. And it was like it was like a real groundbreaking thing. I remember we did it. and He was like really pissed off at first, and then he was like, when it was finished and yep. it healed, he went, "Man, this is cool. This but, is a really yeah, good way." That's the era of discovery and still learning, and you know, hooking up with a good collector and good clients. Mm. You're willing to give people a chance, and because Paul's cream of the crop, yeah, you know, it's going to come out good. Where one of the things I try and say to artists now is maybe it's me just being nostalgic. Like I used to love someone passing something on to you because yeah. you felt like you'd attained a level of respect and you'd earned it. Mm -hmm. Where now it's just Google, forum, Instagram, all yeah. this stuff. So everything's so instantaneous. Um, but then that the, the art of self-discovery of – working something else out yourself. And at his age. Yeah. And he was so famous for his black yep. and grey porches and yep. so famous for his black and grey work. And then when I started, and with me, he did a lot of colour on me. Yep. Yeah. Which was like, you know, and then with Philip Lou, yep. when I got Philip to tattoo me, because yep. Philip's famous for his giant Japanese pieces. Yeah. And I said, I want Jesus. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. He says, I want yeah. Jesus. And he's like, Man, I haven't done one of these since I was in Mexico, yeah, basically, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I had a little card. It was that big. Yeah. Little, you know them little religious cards? Yeah. And he said, have you got an idea what you want? I said, that. And and that was the guy, for me, yeah. that completely changed my whole attitude towards tattooing. Yeah. Because you've got to remember, I come from the stencil day. Yeah. When they put a black stencil on, if the stencil rubbed away, you had six fingers. Yeah. Because the stencil yeah, was missing. Yeah. I can't remember any fingers I've drawn on there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like Philip just, we were in a hotel room in Amsterdam and um, Tintin was there. She was there. My ex-wife yep. was there. And uh, they consumed something that made them tired. Yeah. And Philip and I were talking and he goes, all right, brother, lay down. Yeah. It's probably 10 o'clock at night by this time, you know, we'd, we'd eaten. He yep. just finished doing one on Poe. He oh, finished yeah, doing yeah, that, yeah. that snake on post yep. stomach. He just finished doing that snake on post wow. stomach. And um, he said, lay down, brother. He said, well, just give me one minute. And he went and got a blue texter, a red texter, and a purple texter. Yep. And I was laying down. I was just had my arm like that. And he grabbed my arm. And he did an oval. 
yep. with the blue texture. But three red lines, nose, eyes, and mouth. Yep. Got the purple texture, put the length of the hairs, they picked up the machine and tattooed me. Yeah. It was like Yeah. Where true, did true come? artists like child prodigy. Yeah. It was like yeah. what did that come where did that come yeah. from? I'd never had anyone yeah. tattoo me like that before, you know, yeah. just Nothing. Well, I remember hearing a story when he was living in Goa with the family on the beach. They had the Sporting and Rogers little flash catalogue. And Philip's job was to, on the grid system, enlarge things, like draw them bigger and smaller for the clients. Yeah. So maybe that's where he honed some yeah. of those skills. It just freaked me out. He just, yeah. It was actually watching somebody who was naturally gifted yeah. and was given a gift that, yeah. and he was so humble about it. Yeah. And yeah. he was so peaceful. Yeah. And we talked a lot, Philip and I. We talked because of my past yeah. and my um, affliction yeah. with um, addictions. Yeah. You know, he was really curious about drug addiction. Yeah. He had some issues in his own family. Yeah. And he was like, man, you know, you've got off it. And I go, yeah. And he goes, yeah. you can get off it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he talked about his dad, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, 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 we became really, really good friends. Yeah. Over a twenty-four hour period, we, yeah. all of a sudden, I'd never met the guy. I'd, I'd heard of him, and I knew he yep. was like the, one of the best tattooists in the world. And it was yep. impossible to get tattooed by him. Yeah, he had no vacancies whatsoever. Yeah, but because we became friends, and he knew how, how passionate I was. Yeah, and at that stage, I was being tattooed by yeah you know, everyone. I'd just been tattooed by Ed Hardy. Well, Rollo started it for me. Yeah, Mike, Mike Malone. Yeah, Ronnie Acker's introduced me to Mike Malone. Because what were you doing then? You were getting your stuff redone by Ron or added on by Ron? I was getting Ron? some stuff redone by Ron. Because um, I hadn't been tattooed for 19 years. Yeah. I had a Jesus outline on my back that Rob, that Rob yep. Woods had done. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of swallows on my chest. And yep. I had butterflies. I had butterflies on my chest. Yep. And I had the In Memory of Mother on my arm. And Ronnie Eccles was redoing the, yep. the um, In Memory of Mother. And uh, he said to me, oh, you should get a bodysuit. And I said, I want a bodysuit. I said, yeah. but I collect people. Yeah. I said, I don't. I said, I'm not about getting a bodysuit and just getting coverage. I want. Yeah. I collect artists. Yeah. And I used to look at a lot of tattoo magazines because, you know, the world had changed. We had tattoo magazines. Skin and Ink was out. And yeah. All that stuff. Australian tattoo was out. You know, yeah. it was getting all of the Australian stuff. And Ronnie right said, Oh, I got a good mate of mine, Rollo, and I knew Rollo from his Flash. Yeah. Mike Malone. He said, He's in Hawaii. And, you know, any excuse for me to go to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll go to Hawaii. He's the funny, funniest man I've ever met, Mike Malone. He was so funny. Yeah. He was just a, he's, he's just a comedian. You know, the story goes that his shop used to tattoo all the American sailors and all the sailors come all around the world, come to Hawaii. That's where they were based. And you'd be a picture on the wall, the flash. They go, oh, that one up there's 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah, sit down. You'd do the outline and say, all right, off you go. They go, well, what are the colours? So oh, no, that's another 20 for the colour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. he was telling me one stage, yeah, they had a production line, one outlined, one shaded, one yeah. coloured, like three different tattooists did the one tattoo, and you just move. Next well, guy would sit down. Yeah, different era. And, mm. and when, when it's on, it's on. Yeah. You know, you're not going home early today. Yeah, yeah well, they work 24 hours a day. So, I mean, you know, yeah. if the boats are in, yeah. all the sailors were getting towed before they went back out. Yeah. They were getting towed, yeah. you know. And he said, I, I was talking, we, we were talking, he said to me, actually, Ed Hardy's son apprenticed with Mike Malone yep. after that. But he said to me, mate, have you ever heard of Ed Hardy? I said, no. I've said, I've seen some of his work. Yeah. I know that he went to Japan and he yep. trained over in Japan. He said, I can hook you up with Ed. He said, what about Jack Rudy? Yeah. I thought, oh, black and grey, I don't know. He said, look, he's worth, because I was yep. collecting artists. Yeah. He said, he's worth talking to. So he rang Ed. It was really funny. And at that stage, Ed was having a art exhibition in San Francisco painting. Yeah. And he said to me, you know, the dickhead thinks he can paint. He said, he can't paint. He's not a bad tattoo. He said, but he can't paint. Yep. And I just thought that was really funny. Yeah. You know, that he, he's bagging this guy who's supposed to yep. be one of the best in the world. And he's yep. saying, you know, the best mates. And um, so I was really lucky. Because Rollo gave me the introduction, yeah. So I went over and I seen um, Ed. And then I went and seen Jack Rudy and got tattooed by Jack. And Jack didn't start work till one o'clock in the morning. I've heard he's like the latest man on the planet because he has um, different working times to everybody else, which yep. is quite funny, you know. Yeah. And you, you know me fairly well. I'm really yeah punctual, punctual, and I'm <laughs> yep. on time and I'm efficient. You know. Well, he was supposed to do 
my, my stomach, especially a big turn on my stomach. After he did my leg, he did, did a wizard on yeah. my leg. And Rollo did um, a Japanese warrior on the other leg. And uh, I went back to get the second one, and Jack was there entertaining a bunch of guys. Yep. And I was sitting there for two and a half hours. And I got up and I said, later. Yeah, and he yeah. went, what? I said, later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, no, no, I'm ready now. I said, no, I'm not ready. Yeah. I'm finished. I'm going home. Moment's gone. Yeah, I'm going home. Yeah. And I got Paul Brenner. Yeah, nice. To do the same tattoo on my stomach. Nice. You know, it's just a woman that turns into a dragon. Yep. I got Brenner yep. to do it. And, um, and then I go back to Greg James's shop in Sunset Strip and – Greg and um, Jack really been mates because you know they all get, they yeah. all mates from that era, from that era the sixties and seventies everyone. everyone knew each other you know yeah. and um, Mike Malone's the only one that I really missed out on you know yeah. uh, not Mike Malone um, the Irish guy Maloney. Mark Mahoney Mark Mahoney yeah. I really I'm really sorry that I never got a tattoo yeah. from Mark because he's a lovely he's yeah. a lovely human being he's a good yeah. guy good and, tattoo and too. the way his career has gone now like oh, films yeah. Oh, yeah. interior design for yeah. hotels in Ibiza like. yeah. yeah he's gone out of control I spoke yeah. to him a few months ago yeah cool. I spoke to him a few months ago I rang him a few months ago yeah. I want to do a podcast with him oh, I want to get him on my show and do a podcast yeah. with well, him because yes. he's really cool he's a cool yeah. guy and so what we did we went back to LA and Greg threw a pair of sunglasses on Jack Rudy's <laughs> wizard and we took a photo because those days there was no phones and all that shit yeah. so we, we took a photo and we sent it to Jack yeah. in the mail he said oh I had to touch up that tattoo yeah. and we said the next time we seen him at a tattoo commission he was like yeah fucking asshole you know but yeah that was the era all the all the pranking yeah. all the wind ups yeah. Yeah. yeah it was all the stuff yeah. and, the, and, the, and the reality was Greg James did fix Ed Hardy's tattoo. Yep. There yeah. was some shit that he mixed up, and some of the lines were really, yep. you know, because you know Ed was yep. entertaining some Japanese superstar yep. that was there on the day. Yep. Yeah, right. The yep. guy that I can't remember his name now. The guy that's flasher was that Ed put on my leg. Yeah, was a really nice Japanese guy. And he had his yep. book there, his flash book, yep. and we picked that the axe murder out of the book. Yep, and Ed tattooed that on my leg. You know. Yeah. And then cool. this started. It was like. It was like an obsession that just yep. it hit me so hard that I. What was the What was the time frame roughly? Like how many years? Two and a half years. Fucking wow. Two and a half Quick. years. Yeah, full you body must suit. Must have been constantly healing. Full body suit. Two and a half yeah. years. Yeah. And there was no numbing cream. Yep. As I said, we're going to the um, JD Crow. JD Crow yep. show. Tattoo two. Oh. Yeah, the tattoo two was that the one there? Oh, no, that's a Sydney one. The yeah, other the one's other hanging one's, out yeah. on the wall. Yeah, the yeah. JD Crow two. I can't remember what year it was now. 95 and Greg and we're getting ready for it anyway yep. Greg said you're going to have to just sit you know we're just going to have to do it and he did 27 hours in 3 days because he did a giant snake that goes through my whole leg and it yep. ties in everyone else's tattoos yep. Yep. and it finishes up in it and when I went to the show everyone was like just blown away yeah. I still remember but, all, but also back then you know, it's still as good as it was done back then today. But back then, the tattooing was different. Now there's a lot of skin gaps. Mm. That's like wall to wall color. Yeah, we don't have skin gaps. Yeah, we don't have. Yeah. I don't have a square inch. <laughs> Not yeah, one square yeah, inch. Yeah. You know? yep. Poked in yep. this armpit, and um, I love Poke Sola. He's a yeah. really good human being. He's a, he's a good person. Yeah. And um, he did this armpit, and he did all in black and grey with a big skull. Yeah. And a guy called Michael Lewis did the other armpit. Okay. I did them in on the same day. Because I knew that I was going to have to sit with yep. my arms up over my sense. head. Makes sense. Yep. So what I did, I said, okay, we'll get them both done today. Yep. Yep. I'll go back to the hotel room. Yep. I'll just sit with my arms above my head. He obviously had a helper. Days. Obviously yeah. had a helper. Yeah, I had yep. the ex-wife, yeah. Yep. And, um, and because I'd been so obsessed with tattooing, yep. I went and studied what the Yakuza used to do. Yep. After they got tattooed, they'd have a boiling hot shower yep. and wash all, this, all the Vaseline, because yep. we used to use the Vaseline, yeah. and all the paper. Pushing it all in. Wash everything away. Yep. And open up all your pores, then yep. have an ice bath. Yeah, right. Straight away. Yep. Straight away. And I still, I st if I got yep. a tattoo today, I'd yep. go and do it again right now. Yep. I swear by it. They were yep. going to seal us the colour. Yep. They reckon, that's what yep. they reckon the Japanese used to keep the colour in by doing uh, it that way. Yep. So I'd go and have this really hot shower, scrub it all out. Yep. You know, it sounds like it's painful, it's not. You wash it all out, yep. then I'd put ice packs all over, whatever the tattoo, I'd ice pack it. I'd have an ice shower, an ice bath, yep. and then ice pack it. So, you know, I'd do that every time. Um, we got that leg finished. We went to JD Cray. We won best leg. Yep. It was that simple. It was really that simple. Yep. It was like, and every single person there, like there was, um, 
Mark Mahoney was one of the judges and he was yep. talking about it. And, he's, and I like, as I said, Mark Mahoney said to me, he said, Greg James is one of the best coloured tattooists in the world. He yep. said he packs it yep. like no one else. He said he, the way he lays the ink down, he yep. said, he said, I don't believe anyone's better than him. Yep. You know, and that was him coming yeah. from there. Mark, he just said, you know, that, that man, he said, because Greg uses a three flat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's open like that. Yeah. Like, but Greg would have like pioneered so many different needle techniques and would have mixed his own pigments. He did. Yeah. Tuned his own machine. And for whoever's listening is not familiar with Greg James, to make the the dollar drop or whatever it is, like he tattooed Motley Crue, Guns yeah. N' Roses, yeah. all these sort of He went on back tour with the Motley Crue. The Motley Crue took him on, there put him go. on 3000 a week yep. to go on tour with them while he yep. tattooed them. You know, nice. He tattooed Charlie Sheen. You know, that's how I met yep. Charlie Sheen. Yep. Um, Wasn't there a funny Roseanne. watch story with Charlie Sheen or he gave, something? He gave Greg a Rolex watch as a tip. Yeah. Just took off a golden Rolex and, and gave him his tip. Wow. You go to Greg's house, he's all, you know, those movie things, that click, click things, yep. you know, often. Charlie was a very generous human yeah. being. But he'd get a tattoo, honestly, two inches square. Yep. It would take five hours to tattoo him because he'd be full of yep. some sort of concoction of chemicals. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> vodka. We'd have to close the shop down. With an entourage? With an entourage. <laughs> yep. and then he'd say to the bodyguard, it's a true story, he'd say to the bodyguard, go out and sit in the car, I'll get Ronnie to slap you up. You know, have some big <laughs> Negro guy, you know, 140 kilos, and he'd be like, go and sit in the car, and then he'd give me his credit card. Go yep. and get 4000 out of the bank, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then he'd just look at me and he'd say, Let's go to Heidi Fleiss's, you know, to the brothel. And I say, mate, yeah, yeah. I got my wife coming in from Miami in four hours. Yeah. Well, that's four yeah. hours. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just completely out of yeah. control. Yeah. But, but Greg tattooed him. He tattooed most of the people. David Carradine. He tattooed yeah, David wow. Carradine. Yeah. Because Greg had a back room of oh, Sunset, Sunset Strip. Sunset Strip, yeah. And that's where he said, you mate. And the toilet was out the front in the waiting room. Right. Well, David Carradine's getting a tattoo on his ass. Completely naked, gets up, walks straight through the shop, and walks out of the. T- now, like, it can only be, in, it can only happen in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's all these women sort of standing yeah. there, like this. David. Thankfully, Carradine. there were no phones back then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah can imagine that if there yeah. was, if there was phones. So, yeah. yeah, we had a we had a really good time. We was really lucky. And yeah. I travelled the world. I I got to meet a lot of really, really, really nice people. Yeah. But I also had some really good Australian friends too. There's Trevor yeah. McStay. Yeah. You know who I think's one of the finest. Yeah, he's tattooists. one of my biggest mentors. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. one of the finest tattooists in Australia. Yeah. You know, like you know Tony Cohen tattooed my ribs, which you know yeah. at the time you know it was really funny because Tony was like. Well, you better leave some skin for me, you little shit. You know, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, but I'm not. I don't. I don't, I don't want a skull. You know. He's yeah. Like, well, what do you want? Yeah. And I wanted a fantasy. Yeah. And he did a big Boris. I mean, yeah. ribs. You know. Yeah. And we have a standing joke about it. You know, it's always like, ah, you know, you, you just want this fancy bullshit to, to wear. And I said, mate, that's what I want. My body. Yeah, that's what I want. You know. And then I got Mario Bath. That's a good story. The yeah. Mario Bath story. Yeah, the big head. Yeah, yeah. Brano. Um, yep. Dwayne Cash and I. Yep. We were in Nashville, Tennessee for a convention. Yeah. And Mario's there. And I said to Mario, I said, I'd really like you to do my ribs. Yeah. And he's Austrian. He's at the convention. Yeah. I say, yeah, I've got to go back to Australia. Yeah. Can you handle pain? <laughs> I said, don't worry to find out. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. He said, we start 12 o'clock tomorrow. Yep. We start here. And he was another one that just drew it straight on with a pen. Yeah, right. Just got yeah. the text to colour out and just yep. drew, drew, you know, out of his head, like, yep. just drew that thing. And he started, I think it was with the 23 Magnum. The line, the first line was sideways, just like, yeah. And I just think, oh, my God, this is <laughs> Here we go. It's going to be a big day. Yeah, yeah. We finished at 8 p.m. that night. So he did an eight-hour sitting with this Magnum. Yep. And in the end, I, Dwayne, Dwayne Casualty, in the end, I couldn't hold my arm up anymore. Yeah. So Brano and Dwayne yep. had turns and hold, keep my arm up because I, I was laying and I was laying on a, on a stretcher, the, the yeah. timber. Like no massage table. No, no massage yeah. table. It was just, just a bench with a towel on it. And there was blood. Mario Bath yeah. had blood all oh, over his pants. Blood everywhere. His yeah. pants were just looked like yeah. did an operation. Yeah. There was blood all over him, you know. But we smashed it and in the end. The, the, show, the show would close down. People yeah. were closing up their stalls. And Mario was still smashing out the tattoo, you know. And he said to me after we finished, he goes, you can handle pain. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would have gone into shock after about an hour. Yeah. I'm, you know. I'd never do it again. I wouldn't yeah. recommend it. But yeah. Yeah. In the moment. You want something bad enough? Yeah. You'll get it, you know. Yeah. And I've had a couple of sessions like that. I did one in Amsterdam. Yeah. I had Freddie Corbin. 
Freddie Corbin, um, Timothy Hoyer. So were your forearms like the last completely big bare. Spot to go? Yeah. Yep. Last piece to go were from Reese Gordon. Hands, yes. Reese yep. Gordon was the last yep. Cause I because I was old school. I was a, yep. a criminal. Yeah, and criminals didn't like tattoos past your elbows because you yep. still wear a suit, and no one knew yep. you got tattoos. You and know. you were like identifiable. <clears throat> you were identifiable, yep. and you stood out in the crowd. You know, I could still walk yep. through customs. I could still yep. go places. No one knew I had tattoos. Yeah, you know, I had choices of yep. when I let people see my tattoos. I, th I think people now don't understand what it was like that then. Like you more than me, I've definitely experienced discrimination because of tattoos. Yep. Like. You know, when I was 18, I had half sleeves and the local guy boss in the milk bar that had seen me growing up from six years of age, buying mum packets of cigarettes, bread and milk, all of a sudden saw the tattoos and I was scum. Yeah. You know, you couldn't even, to get a bank account, you would hide things. Exactly. To go for a job, you would hide things. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't even say you were a tattoo artist. If the cops seen you know? a tattoo, they pulled you yeah. over. I think it used to be one for suspicion, no, one for stupidity. Hmm. Two for military, three was suspicion. Yeah. And we, yeah. 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 And in, in, when I grew up, the only people that had tattoos were criminals. Yep. And yeah. soldiers, you know, like yep. armed for People that took risks <clears throat> took yes. tattoos, had tattoos, yep. whether it was the cops, the yeah, you're fire on the brigade. Outskirts. Yeah. Yep. So it was the risk takers, you know. Yep. And now tattoos used to basically were, fuck you. Yeah, leave me alone. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah don't come too close. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and as I said, I had all my tattoos completely, you know, like no, nothing past my arms. Yeah. All the rest of my body was finished. Yeah. And was in Amsterdam and I'd made that decision, you know, that I I, yep. I thought I'd given up crime. I thought I'd retired. Yep. Yep. I thought I'd retired. And I, I, got my, I got my forearms smashed in one, yep. in one in 36 hours. Yeah. And we got them all done. And I said, you know, yep. Freddie Corbin did that one there. Yeah. And um, then, see, my forearms are for my mum. Yep. So that's the people say to me, oh, tattoos don't mean anything. Well, to yep. me, I'm different. They do. Yeah. Every tattoo I've got is significant for a reason, you know. Yep. My mum passed away when I was 19. My first tattoo yep. was in memory of mother. Yeah. That was Bobby Woods. Yeah. He did that, yep. you know. Yep. That was my first tattoo ever. Amazing. And then I got a peacock over here and yep. a hooker. I wish I'd never got them covered up now. Ronnie Ackers taught me yep. that. And um, so, you know, I. I, I already knew my eyes were for my mum because that's how you pray. Yep. I'm not a religious person. But that's why I got Jesus there, yep. an angel there, yep. the Virgin Mary there, and yep. the Rock of Ages there. Yep. So that's how you pray. You know, that was, yep. it was always, you know, I have two angels on the back of my shoulders for my twin yep. daughters. Yep. I have another angel over here for Raven yep. for my 26 year old yep. daughter, you know. I think you want to be forward for quick Chevy because I'm running out of room. <laughs> but, um, you know, so all my tattoos were actually significant to me, yep. you know. Yep. The axe murder was 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 a yep. reason, you know what I mean? Yep. My legs are all one side of my legs is all the Japanese stuff with the warriors fighting. And this side's a lot more feminine with the dragons yep. and the girl, yep. you know, and it's a lot softer. Yep. And the wizard, you know, from Jack Rudy. Yep. So the left hand side was my feminine side, the right yep. side's the masculine side. Yeah. And we always have this battle, you know. I mean it's like yep. the black wolf and the white wolf. You're always gonna have this battle between yep. good and bad, you know. And then, you know, cut a long story short, I um just got fully covered and I actually went into a full like a depression. Yeah. Yep. I'd walk into a studio, yeah, and I'd smell the, the green soap. Yeah. And I'd get anxious, not feel sick, so yeah. I, I had run out of room. And after such a concentrated yeah. experience in those couple of years, like you probably in the tattoo shop at least every week. Yeah, yeah, it was if just not insane. getting tattooed, visiting or whatever, because the, the yeah. friendships and we lived travel. In them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I would never go to the Gold Coast without going hanging out with Brenner and going yep. out for dinner. Yeah, yeah. We go to dinner. I go to America. I'm Greg James, and I used to stay at Greg James's house. He's the best yep. man at one of my weddings. Yep. You know, like we'd become friends, you know. Yeah. Even today, if I ring Freddie Corbin, yep. hey, man, how you doing, yep. you know. It doesn't matter who it is I speak to. And he was like, yep. you know, as I said, I rang Mark Mahoney the other week. Yep. You know? What's doing, man? You know, what yeah. are you, what's happening? Yeah. And people are yep. just, it was like, it was, it was a really close family. It was a really tight knit. Yep. You know, everybody knew everybody. Yeah. You know, Jorgen, Jorgo, from Jorgen. Trevor's mate. Um, Jorgen, Jorgen. From Austria. Was he Austria? Oh, no, no. Henning. Henning. Jorgen, yes, Henning, yeah. You know, like yep. we, we were at Japan together and yep. you know, it was just. Yeah, because you were at that Tokyo convention. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was living in London at the time around 2000 
Yeah, I got tattooed by um, Horiyoshi. Yep. Did the, yep. the did the poke on the back of my neck, and yep. they had all the cameras there because you know I'm a white guy. Not many yeah. white guys used to have the full suit. No, not at all. And they went right on with it. You know, they gave me a, a um, yep. what do you call it, a kimono. Yeah. And they took me to all the clubs and yep. took me to the restaurants, and yep. it was really funny because we're at the nightclub that one of their own, and it's a really funny story because there's two Japanese masters over there. One's yep. a straight guy, and one's the the gangster. Yeah. And I'm with the, the gangster guy because yep. that's who I sort of yeah. magnetically got attracted to. <laughs> yes. And they're like, the power of attraction. <laughs> come out the back, come out the back. And they're all out there. They've got their, their geishas. They've got all their girls yep. there. And one of the guys there, he's got no legs. Right. Well, the story goes, that's the brother of Hayatoshi. I'm not sure. Hayatoshi. Hayatoshi. I get him mixed up the two of them. Yep. The, the gangster one, it's his yep. brother. And he's lost both his legs. He smashed his Ferrari. Yep. <laughs> about two years before. So he's got no legs from his knees down. Yep. Lovely guy. Yep. Stocky little muscly yep. guy. He's got all the geese and girls there and he's he says to me, Oh, you full suit. Yeah. I go, yeah, he goes, everything. <laughs> I go, yeah, he goes, everything, you know. Yeah, yeah, and the girl's yeah. like, hee, <laughs> And I go, yeah, he goes, show me. Like that, you know, he's just trying to trying to embarrass me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, one minute. You full suit. He goes, Yeah. I say everything. You go, yeah. I said, you show me. You go, no, me Japanese. <laughs> no, the girls are gill and laugh. And that's straight away he made him become yep. friends with me. Yep. I was like, yep. and after that, my money, he said, they told me, your money's no good in this yeah. country. Yeah, wow. Well. I wasn't allowed to spend a penny. Yeah. We went to a nightclub that night and he was driving a big pink Cadillac. <laughs> it was so funny. Well, he wasn't driving one of his drivers. We, yep. went, to, we went to their, their, um, nightclub yeah and every time i try it because you know we buy drinks you know if yeah. you buy a drink then i yep. buy you a drink and yeah and every time i go to buy a drink they go i'd say what's he drinking he's not thirsty yeah oh. yeah and then i'd have another drink yeah 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 and i'd say my shit yep. no your money's not good in yep. this country yeah and, and, and i imagine even if you tried to go to the toilet and then sneak to the bar and get yeah. one not yeah. happening they wouldn't have taken it off me yeah you wouldn't have taken it was just yeah they just treated you so respectful yeah they said you're yep. a guest you know, that's, that's the thing as well. Like, yeah, Japan is still as modern as progressive it is. It's still very steeped in tradition. Yeah, it you know, was, we went, it's a beautiful thing to experience. Yeah, I went to a, um, a sauna sauna bath. I hadn't yeah. experienced that big one before, where they got big signs on the walls. No tattooed yeah. people allowed. Yeah, but they took me to one. Yeah, and it was quite funny. And I said to the the young guy that was at the county, you know, they give yeah. you you you. you towels and dressing gown and that and I said uh, it's okay for me to come in I said, it had a big sign no drunkard or tattooed people allowed yeah and I said it's okay if I come in. he goes you're not drunk <laughs> <laughs> like all of a sudden his vision had gone you know like yeah, you're not yeah, drunk yeah, you just yeah, yeah. no drunkard yeah. or tattooed people yeah. allowed you're not drunk yeah and they let me in Amazing. it was quite funny I loved it over there like yeah, this is all this is all because of tattooing yeah you know yeah. I just got so many Doors opened around the world, and I met so many people, and yep. um, it, it was a family. It was a really, it really yep. was a family. It was a really yep. tight community. Yep. Terry Barber at the time, she was yep. the, the greatest female tattooist that I think. Yeah, totally. That was, that was around at the time. Hundred percent, one of the yeah, the great and one of the leaders, like pioneered yep. for modern day females. Yeah, mate, she really did, and she was lovely. She was lovely, and yep. I met her at um, Disneyland. Wow. I was taking right. my kids through Disneyland. Yeah. And she's seen some of my tattoos. She goes, oh, really nice tattoos. I go, yeah, you know. She goes, I'm a tattooist. I didn't even know her. Yeah. I said, not really. She goes, you've got a tattoo studio in Anaheim. Ah. I said, what's your name? She gave me a name and I rang Greg James. She said, yeah. What's your name? He said, mate, she's really good. Yeah, cool. And she had a guy there called Paul Black. That's right. Yeah. He did, he did a tattoo on my leg. I still yep. love it today. Yeah. It was a, it was a um, futuristic girl. Yeah. And he did this fur coat on her, you know, like a, a, yep. a a bear skin or something, you know, and the hairs and everything was, yeah. and still today, it's one of my favourite tattoos, yeah. you know, when I look at it, and she's 30-something years old, I look at it and I think, yeah. wow. Well, that time as well, those key people that were like Greg James, Kerry Barber, Paul, you just mentioned, Paul Braniff, they were all, this is like pre-internet really, yeah. they trade in emails, people are travelling exactly. around the world, they were pushing the envelope, mm. and they would do, like now, artists are so exposed to so many different forms of inspiration. Yeah iPad, Netflix, fucking CGI, like Pirates of the Caribbean. They've got so many yeah. things to draw in inspiration from, which is amazing. But these were the pioneers that pushed it to that and, next and level. We used to have to fax things. 
Yeah. Oh, yep. can you get someone to fax me over that that yep. picture of that flash and it'd be black and white? Then you know yep. they put on the Xerox Xerox up and then fax it across. You know, they'd be this middle of all the yep. line would be all shitty. You know, be, they got the idea. You know. Yeah. And um, and the tattoo magazines were starting to become really popular. Yeah. You know, I still, you know, I, as I said, I've got some home I'll bring down. Yeah, you'd be <clears> like <throat> going to the news agents like yeah. once a month. Oh, Every, they hear you? Yet? Hang Are they for, here yet? Yeah, I'd hang out for it. Yeah. I knew what day they'd come in. Yeah. You know, and I knew, you know, the skin and inks in this week, yeah. you know. Um, Australian tattoo was always yep. one of my favourites because I was usually in them. Yep. You know, yeah. So my ego would be. And um, you went to New Zealand as well? Yeah, that was a funny yep. trip. That was a funny trip. Brano and I went to New Zealand. Yep. And, um, I was nearly finished at that stage. I was, my body suit was nearly finished. Yeah. And um, we were just going to go in best overall. That's, that was all I was interested yeah. in, best overall. I was going in best overall. Well, let's and, not muck around. Yeah. And yeah. someone in their wisdom said, no, we're not running it like that this year. What we're going to do, <clears throat> you have to go in every category. Right. And whoever wins the most categories yep. is going to be best overall. Yeah. And Brad, I was like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, the Australian tattoo magazine's write-up was, I guess Ron Isherwood had to pay excessive baggage. <laughs> so I won something like six categories. Yeah. Wow. I won the best yeah. overall, best leg, best arm, best yeah. back, best colour, best small black yeah. and grey. <laughs> yeah. And Brad, I was like, well, we told you. Yeah, you know, gave you a chance. Yeah, we just wanted to go in best overall, but no, yeah. you just wanted to run. And that's all them little green. Yep. Yeah. Thing like that, a game to you. Yep. I stopped small at home, yeah. Yep. And um, yeah, so you, we did have to bring home all these bloody made out of greenstone statues. It was quite funny, but yeah, that was the write up in the Australian yep. magazine. I guess Ron had to pay excess yep. baggage coming home, you know. Yep. I think someone blew it that one, you know. <laughs> yep. But the yep. funny story is that not many people know about is when I first started competing in shows, they wouldn't let me compete in Australia. Okay. Because I was tattooed by overseas artists, ah. and it was quite political. And old PTAA politics. Old PTAA politics. Yep. Now the guy that used to work for Tony Cohen, like he was one of the ex bikers, the big beard. Joel. Joel. Yep. We yep. was at the Lone Wolf sh show out of Brinjali. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sydney tattoo show. Exactly. Yep. The Sydney tattoo yep. show. And <clears throat> one of the guys said, "Oh, he can't compete." He's got shit from all over the world. It's not fair. It's not. Uh, and Joel, you know, Joel was pretty yeah. rough around the edge. He said, "Yeah, fucking kidding, mate." Yeah. What are you, a pussy? <laughs> he said, a tattoo's a tattoo, you know. He said, "He's competing." Yeah, he's an Aussie too. Yeah, he's an Aussie. And he's competing. He said, "Ronnie Atkins was here when he tattooed yep. him." You know, Paul Brenner's tattooed him. Yep. Tony Cohen's tattooed yep. him. What? They're not Aussies. Yeah. I'm sure Greg James tattooed you when he was in Australia yeah. too. Yeah, at my house. Yeah. yeah there you go. Yeah. yeah and, and sort of Joel. Joel was the one who actually opened the door for me nice. to start competing in tattoo in tattoo comps in Australia. Amazing. Because um, yeah, they, they just wouldn't let me compete. Yep. I remember walking to a show, which was I think was wrong. Yeah. I walked into a show once down south coast somewhere, and as soon as they see me, all the other guys that were full bodied got the shits. I'm fucking no know even going yeah. in this. Yeah. And the guy that was running the, the show said to yeah. me, Ron, look, I don't want to embarrass you, mate. He said, you, you, you're you very winning best overall. Yeah. Will you be a judge? Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. you know. Political. Very political. Yeah. yeah. You, you've already won best overall. Yeah. We're not even going to have the competition. We've yeah. taken that off the rack. Yeah. But will, yeah. you, will you be one of the judges for us? We'll give this to you in the car park. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, and, you know, I remember coming back to Brown yeah. and saying, mate, they, they made me a judge. He said, you're not a tattooist. Yeah. I said, I know. Yeah. I said, I was really uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was. I was really uncomfortable yeah. with it. It was like, but the other yeah. people were complaining that. Yeah. that yeah. I think that's like, mate, there's still trophy hunters now. Mm. Like that, or they were trying to control it. Yeah. Um, but man, the way I see it, you're a goodwill ambassador for tattooing. Yeah. You're showing amazing artwork. You should be able to be put up there. And, you know, if, if your nose gets out of joint, maybe that's a good thing because you maybe got to lift your game or learn something new or, you know. Put some thought into your tattoos. Yeah. yeah. But that's what, back to, you know, those guys pushing the boundaries. Also, at that time, I try and say to some of the younger people in the industry, they didn't have to. They could have just had the sign tattoo and everyone was pretty much making the same money. Yeah. But they went the extra mile. They went home and did the homework. They fucked around with pigments, fucked around with needles and machines. Yep. So they are the ones that really set the standard for today. Yeah, and all of them mixed their own ink. Yep. None of them bought pre-ink. Yep. None of them bought yep. 
pre-mixed link, you know. Like, yeah. I remember seeing there. You know, I'd be with Greg, you know, at 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock yeah. at night, it'd get a bit quiet, you start making noodles. Yeah, yep. Start solding noodles up, you know, like he's the guy that's booked out 18 months, yep. six days a week, 12 hours a day. Yeah. Couldn't even get in the frigging door to see yep. him. Yeah. Making up his own noodles. He never had anyone make his own no, noodles well, up. Well, you had to. That was your part of your quality control. Yeah. No, exactly right. Yeah. And Greg said, I've tried getting you know apprentices yeah. to make me noodles. He said, they're not right. Yeah. He said, you know, all my noodles have got to be perfect. They've got to be yeah. spread that far. They've got to be that deep. And totally. they've got to be that, you know. But, um, yeah, as far as laying down tattoos, I think he's the most gentle tattooist I've ever been tattooed by. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. I think he was the most gentle tattooist I've been tattooed by. And his pigment lay down was really, 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 really yeah. nice. And I was you know, I got tattoos that have just stayed so long yeah. that he's done, you know. Yeah. But um yeah, I th I think I, I was really lucky. I was in a golden era yep. of people yep. I was really sad. I said to a young girl the other day, she's a tattooist. Yep. And I was in Melbourne, I was down in Melbourne at a at a fundraiser. And uh, she said, oh, I'm a tattooist. Yeah. And my first question is, who are your inspirations? Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instagram. Who are your inspirations? Yeah. Yeah. I said, you know, I had another one in Queensland a couple of years ago. I was tattooing a mate of mine doing black and grey work. Yeah. And I went to see my mate at the studio and this guy's, no, 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 no. Yeah. And I said, um, do you know who Jack Rudy is? No. Yeah. Yeah. I said, do you know who Paul Brennan is? She yeah. said, no. And he's in your own backyard. I said, do you know Tony Ranger? No. Yeah. yeah. I just know my work. Yeah. And I thought, oh, my God. Hey. You know, that's really, really sad that yeah. not to know yeah. the history yeah. of what your trade is. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's. I think it's, yeah, it's where it's becoming diluted. Yeah. And from, you know, I'm just over 30 years deep in it and when i began i had to know all this stuff but yeah. also if i started getting a big head i don't want to know that mate i'd be brought into line pretty quick yeah. and schooled um but now i sometimes i talk at tattoo conventions about history and i say i don't expect you to have the obsession i do yeah but at least in your local area you should know who came before you because yeah. you're going to meet someone did shaky bill do that did yeah. Nugget do that? Did yeah. Brano do that? Exactly. Because it's otherwise it's like picking up a guitar and going, who's Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. He actually looked like a bit of a dickhead. The sad part is that I used to be able to just see a tattoo and I knew exactly who tattooed yep. it. Yeah, totally. I'd still say, oh, that's a Trevor McStay tattoo. Yep. Oh, that's a Brano tattoo. Yep. Oh, that's a Rudy. Oh, that's, yep. you know. Yep. You know, you just see whose tattoos they were. And as soon as you see, you go like, oh, that's so and so, you know? Yeah. Well, even with that, you know, black and grey realism, Brano, um, Jack Rudy, like they're the pioneers yep. of it. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, with like realism, which is probably one of the biggest movements in the world, it's it's kind of like the go-to. And, and it, I do get it. But if you got 10 of Australia's best realism artists together and lined, got them all to do a pocket watch, for example, stood them two metres away, you wouldn't be able to tell who did it. Yeah. There's a few people that do have an artistic style where it does stand out, but the rest of it, it could be just done by a big Xerox machine yeah. and there's no soul, there's no artistic voice, mm. you know, where you could see that Trevor's is yeah. because of that, Paul's is because of that. It's quite sad. Yeah. I think it's sad. Yeah, it's gone from maybe a knockabout blue collar industry and clientele base. We're moving into like the mainstream corporate white collar yeah. style, which is great for the art. But as people like ourselves that have a deeper understanding and love of it, it's it is sad. Yeah, and yeah, and then we'll talk about yourself. You know, you've come through this, through the ranks. You've done all the hard work. Yeah. You know, and and loved loved it. And yeah, you know, and to be quite honest, you're one of the, in my eyes, yeah. one of the old school that is still, yeah. you know, yeah, when I, you. you know, to me, you were a kid when you really, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know, I still think I'm a kid. You, you, you act like one, no. <laughs> yeah. and, You know, but you know, you still got the old school values, yeah. and you still love your work. You still yeah. believe in what you do. You yeah. hit the big lines. You know, yeah. get the ink in there. You know, yeah. and do the job. And you you design the piece. You work on the person's leg. Yeah. You sit there and do the hours. You know, yeah. I used to admire that, Brano. You know, just. Drawing, yeah. Greg James just drawing, you know. Yeah, they'd get, they'd measure somebody up, and then they'd 
do the piece and they'd yep. put it on and that's not good enough. You know, I, I remember yep. different times Breno putting the stencil on four or five times. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it yep. just wasn't where he wanted it. Yeah. Nah, 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 that's not, you know. Yep. Take it off and he'd clean me off and he'd put it back on. Yep. And he'd, yeah, all right, sweet, we'll go there, you know. The crazy thing yeah. is now it's some artists, it's just for the photo and you can see that it's maybe a little bit off, but they're like, oh, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, I, Greg, yeah. Rano, you know, and, you know, as I, as I was leading to with yourself, you're the only person in the last 20 years yeah. that I've allowed to tattoo myself or my yeah. family. Yeah. It's, and, you know, I'm pretty I'm pretty stringent with you. Yeah, it's you nothing I've ever taken lightly. It's a huge yeah. honour. You know, you that know. if people say to me, oh, I want to get a tattoo, you know, I've sent yeah. people from, from Queensland down to you. Yeah. Well, if you want to get a tattoo, you've got to go to Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to go to Sydney, I can't help you. I'm sorry. Yeah. And it's yeah. not because I don't know people up there, yeah. but my trust and respect factor, yeah. if I'm – because yeah. a tattoo is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. People – a lot of people get tattoos and don't understand what they're getting. Yeah. yeah. You know, I actually laugh about people who just want coverage. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a tattoo. Yeah. You know, just go and put a bodysuit on, you know, go and – Yeah. You know, buy them sleeves now, they look like tattoos, you know. They well, it's, it's all pretty much it, like life in general has been diluted. Mm. So you can get, you can, you know, I've worked in Thailand, so I can't say too much, but you can you can go to Thailand, go to Bali, yeah. get your stuff done, get tranked up to the eyeballs, get lathered in numbing cream. But it might look cool, but then what do you got from it? Yeah, I went to Bali and got fucking off my head yeah. and got covered. See, everyone in my tattoos. Wayan and Wayan did it. That's yeah, it. Wayan and Wayan. You know. And G'day went past and said, G'day. <laughs> there you, you go. I mean? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, yeah. Every one of my tattoos yep. is significant. Yeah. Every single tattoo I own has got a story to it. Yeah. Every, every one of those people that art, because I, I collected artists. Yes. Yeah. I knew what I wanted, yep. but I collected the artist. Yeah. You know, and if I didn't have a rapport with that artist, and if yep. I didn't have a respect, yeah, and some sort of belief that he loved the art, yep. of tattooing, I didn't get the tattoo. Yeah. And I knocked back some pretty hot yeah, shot tattoos. Yeah, I imagine people were wanting a piece they, of skin. Everyone was wanting a piece of skin. You know, yep. it was getting getting to a point where I was running out of skin, and I was getting people who were starting to become a little bit arrogant. Yeah. You know, I won't say one, one, one particular guy in LA, he actually had an attitude about it. And yeah, I said, well, mate, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was lucky I didn't punch him in the head, you know, yeah. if I was that sort of guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm serious. He had a real For he sure. had a real attitude about it. You know, yeah. he's, he's a rock star tattoo. He thinks yeah. he's, you know, he said, well, why haven't you asked me? I said, because you're not good enough. Yeah. And then. It's your body. Yeah, but you're not good enough. Yeah. And I just, you know, I'm like, I'm pretty blunt and tell the <laughs> yes. truth. You know? The spade's a spade. I don't care what colour yep. you paint it. The yep. spade's a spade, you know what yep. I mean? And quoting Breno, you can't polish your turn. Yeah, that was always an amazing yeah. one. Yep. You can't polish your turn. Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. whatever you polish it. Yeah. I remember my daughter came back from America, Raven. Yeah. And while I was away at the meditation camp for yep. the eight years, yep. and um, some ass wipe over there tattooed. No fear, fearless. Yep. yep. Down down her hips, and it starts that big, it goes that big. Yep. You know, it's like you only want to just look at her tits or yeah. some borderline pedophile yep. backyard tater tattooist yep. that got a sixteen year old kid drunk. Yeah. Four, no, fourteen year old kid drunk. Yeah. And tattooed her side. Yeah. Lucky it was in hero. America. Yeah, like yeah. in America, not in Australia, because he would have been tattooed. Yeah, yeah. Yep. he would have been tattooed with "I'm sorry." Yep. With a machete. Um, but anyway. Yeah, so she comes down to Australia and yep. I'm in jail and I send her over to Brano. Yeah. To, to, to Robin's going to laser it. Yeah. And I ring, you know, Brano. <laughs> I ring him up. I'm in jail. Yeah. Hello, mate. She's there. Can we do any of this? Can't fucking polish a turd, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Raven started crying. <laughs> Dad, yeah. you send me to this yeah. guy? Yeah, you can't fucking polish a turd. Because yeah. he's known Raven since she was born. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's like, you can't polish a turd, yeah. mate. And she's yeah. crying and Haley and Brooke are with her and big sisters. And, and Robin's like, lay down, darling. Yeah. We're going to laser. Yeah. We're getting the laser onto this thing. We're yeah. get rid of she, yeah. she still hasn't got it finished. She's still got to catch. Yeah. She keeps saying, I'm going down to see Reese and yeah. get it finished, yeah. you know. She will eventually. Yeah. God love her. But yeah. yeah. I just remember I was going to hear her crying. <laughs> I thought, you are so Breno, yeah. Don't fucking polish your turn, mate. Mate, he's, yeah, he, I remember getting tattooed by him, holding Paul in such high regard. And then when I came back from all my travels, 
I didn't know where I was going to land. I got offered a job in Melbourne at, at Vic Market with a guy called Colin Gower, but I'd grown up in Melbourne and thought, oh, I've still got the travel bug. My parents are in Queensland. And then Paul offered me a job of like part-time fill-in spots. Yep. I'm like, that's the one because yeah. that's – I never thought, ever thought I would ever be good enough to work there. Yeah. And then finally got my foot in the door and, you know, it was like the, a big turning point in my career that set me on the path to Sydney and, and to here today. It was a good operator. His yeah. shop was clean. It was yep. always modern. You know, yep. you had the best gear, the best autoclave, the best. Always, always yep. had, he had good quality and his yep. workmanship was there, you know, and yep. Tony was, was so up and coming at the time. Yep. He was just out of control. Well, still, still, Tony's still there, but I was looking at some of his stuff the other day. He's just adapted to the modern way of tattooing now. Has he? And he's yeah. doing everything as good as he has ever done. Yeah. And, and I think about that as Paul as well. If he was here today, he'd have an iPad. He'd be using the latest machines, yeah. the latest needles. He'd be trying everything, and yeah. he'd still be at the top of the game. That's Chris Cashwell. Mm. Yep. Now Chris and I are friends. He's yep. never tattooed me. Yep. We're friends. We're yeah. friends. You know, I like Chris. Yeah. And um, I nearly opened a studio with him. Wow. Many years ago, I'm talking yeah, about cool. when he worked up at the Cross. Yep. He was working up at uh, Tony's and or Max's. 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 He was working Prince. up at Max's. Yeah. Yep. And he was, you know, he was, he was flip flopping. He wasn't yep. sure what he wanted to do. You know, we nearly opened a studio together. Yeah, we nearly opened a studio together. You know, yeah, we're yeah, about yeah. Because I just love, look, I just love totally. Yeah. I just love for me, art, like you know? a tattoo shop is the best place on earth. Yeah. And like, if you've got, if you've got a great day with good customers, good artists, good music, mm. everyone's having a good time. You can't go out to the nightclub that yeah. night and have a better day than you yeah. had at work. And. Yeah, you know, it's creative. It's yeah. I believe it's spiritual to me. There's yep. more. You know, I never got told to be a tough guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, yep. I was born a tough guy. You yep. know, I was br yeah. I was brought up to be a hard, horrible. Yeah. What they called a tough guy. You know, what I mean, yep. and that's not who I really was. That's who I tried to be. Yeah. But um, always knew that there was more to life, and to me, the spiritual part of my life became deep. Yeah. And my tattoos become really significant. Yeah. You know, I mean, like as a kid, you know, sure, you know, I got the Jesus on my back. That that Jesus over there, yep. you know, from Woodsy, um, Bob Woods done that outline on my back, and I was using heroin at the time. It was so funny. Yeah. And uh, he was at Bankstown, that little lane there, and he he'd do half the outline. I'd say, oh, I'm gonna go have a piss, you know. And I'd go down and have a shot of heroin. And I'd come back in, <laughs> and by the end of the tattoo, you know, I, was, I couldn't even yep. stand up. Oh, you know? I'm so tired. Yeah. Oh no, he oh. knew Bob. He was just yeah. you know, coming to be blood hanging out of me, yep. and I'd be laying there, you know? yep. and he was fat. Yeah, Bob was yep. Big Bob. Yeah, that was Big Bob. Yeah, you know, yeah, yep. and then um, then we seen him. You and I seen him. Yep. Remember, we seen him at. The I think there's a photo time. of you at the Sydney Tattoo Show. The Sydney Tattoo Show. Yeah, yep. 30, 40 years later. Yeah, yep. and Skinny Bob was there. I took yep. my shirt off. Remember, I, yep. we took the photo of me back and with Bob. I've yep. got that photo. I cherish that photo. Yep. And you know, and that's what you know. That tattoo yep. sat on my back just as the outline for over nineteen years. Yeah, and people used to call it Cape Fear. Right. Remember that Robert De Niro yep. show? Yes. They yep. said every time they see, you know, I'd, I'd be, because I was super fit too, yep. you know, and um, you know, I'd come out of prison and I'd go down to the beach and that new formation's going, <laughs> here comes Cape Fear, you know, here, here comes Cape Fear. And that's why I wanted to get it uh, coloured because for years I was walking around that, yep. that outline, yep. you know, it was like, but yeah, you know, like memories like that, that's 1974. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a couple of months ago. Yeah, well, I was born in 73. <laughs> yeah. You know, a couple of days ago. I'd been tattooed before that. <laughs> yeah. Because my first yep. tattoo was off Tex in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go to Danny Robinson, but I was too scared because everybody knew, because Danny worked in Williamstown. That's where yep. the painters and dockers were. Yeah. And my old man told me if I ever got a tattoo, he'd cut it off. Yeah, right. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's not see the see, not, yep. not not hard to see what I was doing. I'd yep. be rebelling against somebody. You know, yep. I mean, that's my, but I love tattoos. You know, I've loved yeah. tattoos since I was a little little. My uncle had them. Yep. Um, he had a he was a boxer. He had yep. a fighter on his arm. The you know, old fighter. Yep. He had that on one arm. And he had something on the other arm. And he was a, he was a, a carnival man. He went yep. around the he fought in the tents all around Australia. Yep. And I used to always remind me and say to me. If you get a tattoo, I'll cut the fucking thing off. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Two things he had was tattoos and junkies. Yep. And I seemed yep. to fit into both of those categories. You know, yep. I, I became a heroin addict with yep. a full body suit. You know, 
I got the full body suit after the Herald. Well, that, that's the extremes, you know, extremes yeah. in life. We were talking about that before. Like, you know, I think I said to you, you know, I'm an addict as well. Oh, 100%. You know, yeah. in denial, yeah. but I, I am. But I've known that you know, ever since I've known you, you know, you're just yeah. obsessive, yeah. compulsive with everything yeah. you do. Yeah. It's really funny. That's what I loved about you too, you yeah. know, like – you know, over the years that we've known each other, you know, it's yeah. like, mate, I've got this car, I'm going to do, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, mate, yeah. I've got this bike, I'm going to do this, you know, and, yeah. and this, yeah. and what you've done here, I love yeah. what you've done here. This is the best TV shop in the world. Yeah, thank you, mate. Thank and, mate, you. And I've seen a couple. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, know, I know. It is. This is the best TV yeah. shop in the world. Yeah. And I've been watching you. it grow. Yep. And it's yep. been, like, really magnificent to watch it grow. Yeah. And it's like everything else. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. And for me, it's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. This studio, yeah. like, say this building got demolished, that'd probably be the end of yeah. Little Tokyo because I could is. never replicate it again. No, you know, and it's got a life of its own now. I'm just trying to guide it and and yeah. keep investing in it. Opportunity comes. Take the opportunity, and and like you said, yeah, the, the harder you work, the luckier it comes. This is where I believe in a higher power, yep, a greater spirit, yep. See, I believe that you're given the yep. gift, yep. of being an artist, yep. And sure, you've refined it, you've worked eight yards yeah. off to, to improve it, yep. And I also believe you're given the gift of having this building as the opportunity to come up, yep. Then you've been given the gift that these things are working to. Yeah, I believe this is me. Yeah, that if you do good things, good things come back to you. Yeah, and if your yep. motivation and intention yep. is pure and honest, yeah, you'll always be rewarded yep. tenfold. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer. Yeah. That everything I have today has been a direct result yep. of me helping somebody else. Yep. Everything. Yeah, everything I own. You know. Yeah, you know, look, my, you know, you've tattooed my wife. Yeah. Um, I get to avoid that tattoo yep. every single day. Yeah. There's not one day I look at my wife's tattoos and think, oh, I wish she didn't have that. Yeah, yeah. I, I love yep. it. Yeah. And the funny part is, and I don't even know if I've told me this, do you remember the old drawing of the girl in the bath? Yes, with the, with yep. the, with all the foam. Well, yep. That's been my yeah. dream tattoo my whole life for yep. a woman to have. Yeah. I never told her that. Yeah, there you go. And she said to me, and that's that's only a drawing. That's not even yep. a real person. That that's yep. a drawing. That tattoo. Yep, that's, that's right. I think the famous Japanese guy. Exactly, yeah. the famous Japanese yep. guy drew it. Well, for thirty years, that's always yep. been my show. V was three, yep. and that was <laughs> yeah. Yep. So yep. you know what I mean. So yep. that drawing's always been my fantasy of my perfect woman. Yep. Yeah. Then, then when V said to me, "I want a koi," I was like, "Yep, yep." Shh, don't yeah. say nothing to you know. Yeah. And then she got the koi. manifestation. The manifestation. Yeah. Yep. And the koi's there, you know, and yep. it was on an Asian girl. Yep. It was this yep. beautiful woman yep. with this incredible waist, yep. this beautiful tattoo. Yeah. And now I get to see that tattoo, yep. you know. Done at Little Tokyo. Done at Little Tokyo. Yeah. And then my daughters all have that date tattooed yep. on their wrist. Yeah. You know, yep. that date when I come home. Yeah. And all that stuff. So, you know, people think, ah, tattoos is this, tattoos. No, tattoos are deep. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And even, even if, like, the image may not look deep to the viewer. Yeah. It's it's still deep, even yeah. if they can't understand it. For us, you know, it, it takes us back to a period of time. There's so many multi-dimensional connections to it all. Yeah, 100%. You know? And as I said, you know, my friendship with you is a yeah. direct result of yes. tattooing. My For friendship sure. with Greg James is a direct yeah. result of tattooing, you know, yeah. Brown O, Trev Mix. You know, and I, I, I haven't seen – I've seen Trev Mix Day – when you were, I, you, yep. no, V and I went down and seen him. Yes, we went down and seen him. V and I went down and seen him. I first started yep. dating V and I went and seen him, and yep. he was like, "Oh, there you go, me." Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. What are you up to? And I said, "No, yeah. I'm home. You know, everything's good. You know, yeah, yeah, yep. no, no shifty shit." And he's like, "Oh, yeah, good, yep. mate, good." But they they're connections that you make. Yep. Through the tattoo industry, hundred yeah, percent. And I, it's like everything well, in life. Well, community then. Exactly. Now it's an industry. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I, I tease people. I say, you know, before when I got tattoos, it was like, fuck off, I'll kill yeah. you. Yeah. Now it's like, jump on my BMX and I'll read you a poem. <laughs> you know, and that's just my yeah. sarcastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, bullshit, but you got you know? the humour, the banter, like, yeah. it's it's the best. But you know what the reality is? I love seeing people out there with them. Yeah. I do. I yeah. do. I love seeing And some people say, oh, they got a hot dog. Well, so what? Yeah. So what? Yeah. We're, we're in an era of accepting self expression. 
So, but you know, tattooing is another form of self-expression, whether it be sexuality, hairstyle, mm. whatever. Tattooing exactly. is still self-expression. You know, I wear a lot of jewelry. Yeah, I, I design jewelry. That's my job. Yeah. I've done it for forty years. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to stop yeah. designing the jewelry the way I want to design no. it. I won't design it like Cartier or anybody yeah. else. I design yeah. my stuff. Yeah, I'm not changing my yeah. style to suit. Yeah, what the, what the people well, want. funny, I was saying to someone the other day, the, the way I view my tattooing now at, at this stage in my career, I'm trying to tattoo how I would want to be tattooed. Exactly. You know. Everything I make is if would I buy it. Yeah. Because I've got a, I've got a yeah. theory. Yeah. I can't be the stupidest man in the world. It must be one more as stupid as me. There's got to be someone as stupid as me, you know? Well, one's born every minute, exactly. supposedly. You know? Someone's got to be as stupid as me. Because if I think it's cool, somebody else might think it's cool. Yep. And so far, it's pretty. It's served yeah. me pretty well, you know? I've had a, yep. I have an incredible life. Um, yep. Yeah, you've, you've led, like, multiple lives in one run and still living them, and I think there's still more to come, oh, so more much to more. evolve. We're just starting now. Yeah. I'm 68 years of age. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I still regret that I can't get tattoos. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sometimes I think about it, I think, no, don't. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think, I'll oh, yeah. get something. But, you know, I don't really, yeah. I don't want, I, I yeah. want them, but I don't want them. It's just yeah. one of them love hate relationships now. It's like, yeah. you've got enough. You've, you've yeah. done your time. So, you yeah. know, you, oh. Well, like I was saying to you before, like I'm in a process of getting everything redone. Mm. And, and my goal then is, to sort of fade gracefully, but I'm, I'm in a, a, a different position because I'm still surrounded by yeah. it every day. Yeah, I couldn't go through it yeah. again. I couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. I know that I'm not mentally yep. strong enough anymore yep. to sit for eight hours. Because I never used to yeah. sit for under eight hours. Yeah. You know, I never yep. sat ever. I don't think ever yep. sat for, under, you know, except for when I got my hands done. Yeah. That was how long they took. But yep. usually eight hours was my sitting. You know, yep. any t anyone that tattooed me was an eight hour sitting, you know, and it was yep. like, Okay, it was, it, was, it was like preparation for going for a walk because I never had numbing cream. I never had none of that stuff. Was also, like, okay. I think a lot of artists back then weren't used to tattooing for that long. Mm. You know, Greg like, used to say, I've got to have a break. Yeah. Mate, I've got to have yep. But I was coming from the other side of the world. Yeah. I was flying all the way to America and getting tattooed in the States. Yep. So yep. I only had a small window of opportunity to get yep. this amount of work done, you know. So yep. they'd say, how long are you here for? I'd say, i book you for eight hours. Yeah. In the end, they got the name. Yeah, it was yeah, all like, yeah. this psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. This psychopath. Ron's on the phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Block that day out. He's coming. He's, he's not going to go anywhere. He's no deposit saying. needed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, you know, they, my, my work was gold that way. And it, yeah. you know, it still is with everything, yeah. everything I do. I still yeah. believe that our word is all we have. Yeah. Um, our commitment, yeah. our dedication, and our love yeah. will surpass any fears or insecurities. Yeah. yeah. So I believe fears. I, a mate of mine said to me the other day, "I love this. He's a he's a he's a, he's a pretty good guy. He's a, he's a, he's, a, he's the actual one of the original members of the Black Power movement in New Zealand. Wow. So he's a bad mother. Yeah, he's a bad yeah, mother, yeah. You know, he's a yeah. he's in his day. He's yep. you know, he was a bad man, and he's he's now helps people. He's, he's doing a lot of work over in New Zealand helping people. And he said to me, brother, he said, fear knocked on my door one day." He said, and I said to Faith, will you answer that? He said, when he opened the door, no one was there. There you go, yeah. And I love that, yeah. you know. If you have faith, yeah. you'll never have fear. Yeah. I mean, just the way he said, yeah. he said, you know, brother, yeah. if fear knocked on my door, and I said to Faith, will you answer that? Yeah. He said, when he opened the door, there was nobody there. And that's the trouble with people today. Yeah. They let fear stop yeah. them from doing the things they yeah. love. They let fear control their feelings. They let yep. fear control their fear of loss, yep. their fear of not having enough. Their fear, yep. Instead of just being Fear grateful. of failure. Yeah, yep. fear of failure. And they don't yep. have a go because yep. I think the only time, the only thing you fear is fear itself. Yeah. And I don't yep. believe there's such thing as fear. Yep. You know? I, I know myself, if you look at this studio, for example, and even later in life, like, I've failed so much and we'll, I hope I continue to fail because yeah, really. I'm going to learn from it. The The key with failure is to not keep making the same mistake. Einstein said it. Yeah. 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 The definition of insanity is making the same mistake and expecting <laughs> yes. different results. Yep. You know? And we, in my program, because I run a drug and alcohol yep. rehabilitation centre, in my program, I teach people that. Yep. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you're not failing. Yeah. You're not failing. You're yeah. learning. As long as we yeah. keep learning by our mistakes, yeah. they're not failures. They're lessons. Yep. Yeah. And we're here to learn, you know. As I said, in my age today, 
I love learning. Yeah. I love getting taught something, yep. you know, and I get taught something every day. Yep. Every day I try to learn something, you know. It sounds crazy, but my books get released this year. Yeah. We'll have a big, we'll have a, I'm yeah. going to have a um, book launch here in yep. probably September. Yeah, amazing. This year. We're having it in Melbourne first. We'll do yep. a presentation. So, so what, what are you doing now with your life, Ron? You're doing the drug and alcohol yep. rehabilitation? We're or doing a drug and alcohol counselling. Or, counselling. Yep. We call, I call it a transformation coach. Yeah. Because so you're, you're not your typical stereotypical counsellor or psychologist no. where people would instantly feel a barrier between them. Yeah. Maybe they're being judged or it's some yeah. fuddy-duddy in an office. Yeah, in the a rough suit. guts. Yeah, but you're relatable yeah. and, you know, you don't hide your life. So I think it gives people some sort of confidence or, or like What comfort. I teach is the drugs are not your problem. Yeah. The drugs that you think are the solution to your problem. Yeah. Your problem is your thinking. You have yep. a thinking problem, not a drinking problem. Yeah. And I say it all the time. You've got a heart of gold and a head of spaghetti. Yeah. What we need to do is unravel the spaghetti yep. so we can contact it to your heart. Yeah. Because the disease lives in your brain. It's not just all addicts. The whole world has a thinking problem. Mm -hmm. We think that if we have more money, life will be better. Yeah. Mike Tyson said it the best I've ever heard. He said, if you think money can make you happy, you've never had money. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I say to people, they go, like, what? Yeah. Yeah. And I say, in 2001, I was laying in a multi-million dollar mansion with my yeah. yachts, with my boat outside, yeah. my cars, and all this, and the, yeah. the, the beautiful wife, the beautiful child. Yeah. I was Boxing Day, uh, 2001, yeah. it's a true story, and I was laying there thinking, I hope I don't wake up, I hope I don't wake up tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yep. I was so, in such a depression. I was in the middle of doing a crime. Yep. I was in the middle of setting up this massive crime. Yep. And I got arrested for it and I went back to yep. prison. Um, and I, I'm not a victim. I don't yep. pretend to be a victim. It's like, if you can't do the time, don't do yep. the crime. Yep. And I went back to prison and I soul searched myself. And I really had a good look at who yep. Ron really was yep. and who Ron really wanted to be. Yeah. And who Ron really was was not who I was being. Yep. So I started transforming myself that's why i called myself yep. a transformation case yeah and i hadn't taken drugs for 16 years at that time yeah right yeah. so it wasn't a fucking drug problem yeah, it was a wrong yeah, problem yeah yep. so i had to transform my thinking and work out why i was never satisfied because my old company used to be called next yeah if your company's called next that means you're not happy with what you have today yeah you're always after the next best always thing. after next 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 that was my yep. company you know and then my company is called The Truth. Yes. And the yep. truth is that I have enough. I have an abundance. Yeah. And today I have I've, I have gratitude. I have gratitude for the life I've lived. Yeah. You know, it, it mightn't be the life that you want to live, but yep. I didn't want to live your life. You know what yep. I mean? Like yep. I look at people and people judge me and I say to them, you know, I'm, I'm not a big carer about what people think. Yeah. Yep. I say, you know, for all you people that judge me, please pray for me so I can be perfect like you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you, when I yeah. say that, people usually put their heads down. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Because if you were perfect, you wouldn't be judging. Yeah. You know, and yes. I do, I say that all the time. You know? And it's, it's pretty easy yeah. in society these days to, to do that. Yeah, I understand. We're yeah. almost programmed to do it. Yeah, and it's sad because yeah. our, our society has got to a point now where we need to rethink our belief systems and understand that there's no black, white, yellow, green. Yeah. We're all human yeah. beings. Male or female. We're all from Earth. We're all from Earth. we human beings. Yeah. And I say, the difference between me today and me when I was taking drugs, I was a human taking. Yeah. Now I'm a human being. Yeah. And the good thing about being a human being is you have empathy and compassion. Yeah. You have love and understanding and kindness. Yeah. Um, but don't get me wrong, every human being's got bad in them. For I sure. don't care what anyone tells you. Yeah. Every single human being is laid in bed at once. Some stage in their life, thought, I'd like to kill that asshole. Yeah. Or I could yep. run over her, or yep. she's pissed me off, or he's pissed me off, or whatever. You know, yep. it's, it's, I don't like. It's a natural human emotion. Yeah, exactly. The difference between most people is that when they feel that, they don't act out on it. Some people do, some people don't. But what we do is we judge other people so that we feel better about ourselves. Yep. When we stop judging ourselves, we stop judging others. Yep. That's what I found for me. 
Yep. Once I stopped judging others, yep. I stopped judging myself. Once I started accepting others, I started accepting myself. And when I started loving others, I started loving myself. Yeah. It was really nice, you know, and it's vice versa as well. You know, I love myself, now I can love my wife. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, my wife's not afraid of me. What a yeah. wonderful thing, you know, come yeah. from where I came from yeah. to have a, a, a relationship with another human yeah. being who trusts me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If I go overseas, my wife's not worried about me playing up. Yeah. She's not worried about me doing a crime. She's not worried about yeah. me doing anything. If she goes overseas, I'm not worried about yeah. her. You know, there's none yeah. of that's relevant anymore because we have this thing called yeah. trust. Yeah. And I think the greatest gift you can have in life is respect and trust. Yeah. yeah. You know? As simple as it sounds, mm. not everyone gets there. You know, and that's your choice. Yeah, yes. I believe we're yep. all capable of getting there for sure. And for I believe sure. it's just a matter of choices. And yep. I think that, take, that we once we take responsibility for whatever it is. And I, I yep. always say, you know, I'm not a victim. I've never have been a victim. I've ne no one's yep. ever heard me whinge red. Oh, we yep. trail, oh, this. You know. Yeah. You can't do the time. Don't do the crime. Yep. If yep. you want to cheat on your wife. Yeah, and you get caught. Don't winch to me about it. I have a real funny philosophy yeah. with, with cheating. I'll, I'll touch on this quickly. If somebody cheats on their missus, this is going to sound really funny because I used to be a cheater. Yeah, I'd never go into business with them. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Because they're cheating on the person they're laying with. So they why are they going to cheat in me? Yeah, why are they going to cheat on me? Yeah, why are they going to rob me? Yeah, if they're robbing their partner. Yeah. Of course they're going to rob yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I know, you know, guys yeah. want to, you know, we always think it's a much thing, oh, yeah, I've got this good sort. Yeah. Well, to me, it's telling me that you're a liar and a thief and a cheat. Yeah. And I don't want yeah. you in, I don't, I don't want you in my life. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't want liar, thieves and cheats in my life. Yeah. I had one live in my head for 30 <laughs> yeah, years, yeah, 40 yeah. years, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I say, that's when I treat people, when I say, oh, would, you let a lot, would you let a liar, thief and a cheat live in your house? They yeah. go, no. I say, why do you let one live in your head? Yeah, true, true. That liar, thief tells you in your head, you're not good enough. Yeah. I don't know about, I know for addicts, most addicts have a period in their life where their head tells them, you're better off killing yourself. Yeah. I think normal people get the same thing. They, people for call sure. it depression. I can't cope with this. Well, yeah, when life gets too much, yeah. it seems like I've, I've been there through an illness. I yeah. thought, you know what, bad news, maybe I'm just going to check out. Yeah. You know, I had my That's whole brain and everything. That's your brain. Yeah. So it's sad when our own brain turns on us. Yeah. You know, a yep. lot of famous psychiatrists around the world and, you know, I'm not going to mention names, but these guys that yep. are, do this for a living, they, you know, they, they get, for, one of them just gave me that Dr. Depenza, Penza or whatever yep. his name is, Joe Depenza. He just did a seminar the other day about the conscious mind and the thinking. Yep. He made $4 million in a seven-day seminar. Wow. You know, yeah. he's thinking well. Yep. And, um, but, you know, like, it's the truth, but the brain does yeah. turn on. The human yeah. race, our biggest enemy is our brain. Yep. You know, they talk about this artificial intelligence. I know nothing yeah. about it. I'm worried about my intelligence. Yeah. Yep. I can't control my intelligence. How am I going to contract yep. it? All I know about anything that's artificial and I'm going to finish on this, right? So when I used to use speed, when it was made from ethadrine, yep. it never drove me crazy like the shit that these kids are using yeah. made in a pseudoethadrine, yep. which is a synthetic. Yep. Yeah. And the ice that they're using today is driving kids crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. That's really bad shit. That's, you can say it. That's the devil's drug. Don't worry about yeah. it. If there's a god and there's a devil, I don't, I don't go yeah. down the road. But yeah. whatever is good and evil, that is the epitome of evil. Because I, I treat kids on ice and it's disgusting. Yeah. What it's doing to human beings is disgusting. You know? um, I don't think there's any such thing as a good drug. Yeah. But I don't judge anyone who takes them. Yeah. I'm not a judge. You know? yeah. I'm here to try to help people. Yeah. My job is to carry a message say you can get off if you want to. Yeah. If you want to, I can show you. But yeah. I'll show you where to dig and I'll show you where the shovel is, but you've yeah. got to pick up the shovel and dig it. Yeah. I can't do anything else, you know, yeah. and that's that's the beauty of, of living my life. Yeah, I am a, um, a lived experience yeah. person. I don't talk textbook and oh, so many chromosomes are killed, and you got this yeah. neuropath. path. I don't give a rat's ass about that. But that that's the one because that's where you're related. We've had many chats over the years, and mm. many more to come. But you're you're relatable. You're compassionate. You have empathy. But most of all, we have the wisdom, Ron, and the yeah. knowledge. And I'm sure in your counselling sessions or transformation sessions, 
you're continually adjusting to that person. 100%. Because not every addict is the same. Everyone is different. Everyone comes from a different place of trauma or yep. whatever you want to yep. you call it. And yep. you've got the life experience and the skill yep. to like adjusting an equalizer on a sound and I don't system. fluff things. I yeah. don't, you know. Yep. I have I have clients that say to them. I imagine a lot would be looking for the fluff. Yeah, and they don't get it. Yeah. Because most of them, I'm, I'm expensive. Yeah. Not yeah. really. You know, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a good weekend on the coke. Yeah. I'm a yeah. real good week on the coke, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But I say but to them. If, if you want the transformation, yeah. that's. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not going to, you know, I've said to them, I say, yeah. I work at Emmy Days, you got left and I'll send you back your money. Piss off. <laughs> yeah. And they go, what? Yeah. But, yeah. I say, no, mate. If you think yeah. I do this for money, you've, you've ran the wrong number. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is not what this is about. This is about trying to help you save yeah. your life. Yeah. And if you don't want to save your life, get the hell out of my way yeah. so I can help someone who wants to save their life. Yeah. Because I only treat four people at a time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've got a I've got a wife, I've got children, yeah. I've got, you know, I've got other interests. Yeah, too. yeah. Spread thin. I, I really <clears throat> like at the moment what you're doing on on your channel with mm. the um what is it like the the client testimonials? Yes, mate. Yeah, yeah that is makes it very even more relatable to people maybe outside of that world yeah. that are maybe even just on the edge looking in, thinking you know I have a problem. Yeah, where can I go? Where can I? We get so much traction from our podcast. Yeah, where I get people just come up to me out of nowhere and say, yeah. "Oh man, I watch your podcast. They've yeah. helped me so much." Yeah, you know, I had a woman yeah. contact me on Instagram. She said to me. I was coming off 120 millimetres of methadone, yep. and I live in rural New South Wales, and I was ready to throw the towel in. I listened to your podcast, and I've got through it. Yeah, yeah, that makes it all worthwhile, you know. Yeah, yep. we get stuff every day. We get some sort of yep. feedback from clients saying, yep. and future clients, yep. saying, "Oh man, you know this is so good. Please, you know, keep yep. doing your podcast." And our podcasts are. We don't we don't have ads. We don't yeah. do it for money. There's no yep. financial gain for me. You know, yep. they actually cost us money and cost us a lot yeah. of time to do them. But yep. we love them, yeah, because it's helping people. Yeah, and I still say it. The reward I get, like I went to Melbourne on Saturday to present an 18 year old boy. Yeah, his jumper because he's playing his first AFL game. Yeah, one year ago he's six foot two. He weighed 40 kilos. He'd been on ice for four years. And his mum and dad had written him off. They thought he was going to die. Out. I can't even speak right now, but yeah. kind of understandable in a way. They're at their wits' end. Yeah. What can they do? They're not trained for this. They don't know how to do it. How heartbreaking. Yeah. But then I imagine that's where you've come along. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on the last stop. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. the last stop. When you last get, when you get salute, to me, so to speak. When yeah. you get to me, you've tried everything else. Yeah. You've been to the psychologist. You've been to the rehabs. You've been yeah. to. The, the, you know, the kiss me bum and I'll for, give me 30 grand for 30 yep. days and you yeah. can do yoga over that corner and you can have yep. a sweet bath. We've got the chef here, he's just whipping you up a little latte and yep. something else. We're going to have some breakfast. How would you morning. like your omelette this morning? Yeah, exactly. What would you yeah. like in your omelette this morning? I'm not that guy. Yeah. I'm like, you do what I tell you. You're writing certain things. You're learning about your mind. I teach yep. a lot about the mind. See, I work off eight demands. Openness. Yep. To stay where you stand but don't stand your ground. So you yep. tell everybody how you feel. Yep. Acceptance, accept that other people can see you better than you can see yourself. Yeah. You know, that's a really important thing, you know. Reliability. Yeah. Say what you do and do what you say, you know. Yep. Congruence. Don't ask somebody to do something if you're not prepared to do it yourself. Yeah. Thoroughness. If you're gonna clean this room, start at the ceiling. Yeah. Work your way down, clean your way, don't yep. cut corners, you know. Consistency, you start the day at five mile an hour, you yep. finish the day at five mile an hour. Yeah. Respect. In giving respect, you get respect. You yeah. can't take respect. You can't stand over people for respect. You can't buy, you know. Yeah. Respect has to be earned. And the last one is honesty. And this means don't add bits on so it sounds better and don't leave bits yeah. off so it doesn't sound as bad. Yeah. And then after their eight demands, we have down the bottom action. You take the I out of the middle and you put it in front of it. So I act on these demands because yeah. it's an action program. My yeah. program is about doing the job. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning and your brain says to you, oh, I want to get stoned. You say to your brain, yeah, fucking oath I do. But if I do, I lose my wife and children. Yeah. But if I do, I lose my... So I never say to anybody, you can't use drugs. Yeah. I say, you can't use a chemical and have a good life. Yes. Yeah. You can use chemicals. Your choice. But you have yeah. to have the consequences, yeah. you know? Yeah. And and people say to me, I hate, I hate heroin. Yeah. I say, seriously? Yeah. So for the last 10 years, you've been injecting heroin into your veins every day and you hate it. Yeah. So that's just a lie. You yep. love heroin. Yep. 
And I say, I love it. Yeah. I robbed banks for it. Yeah. I escaped from prison for it. <laughs> you tell me that I didn't love it. I said, mate, I gave my whole life to it. Yeah. I loved it. But I hated the things I had to do yep. and the person I became when I used it. Yeah. And that's the truth. Yep. You have to come to the terms of the fact that you actually hate it. Yeah. Bullshit. Yep. You actually love it. But you yep. hate the consequences. Now, the trick is here that you've got to come to the belief and the understanding is you can't have the drug without the consequence. Yeah. Yeah. So that way it doesn't feel so bad. It's like, yeah. Okay, it's not being taken off me. And now I have free will. Yeah. I have a choice. I choose not to take it because I don't want to have the consequences. Yeah. And I find I get so much more people st get clean, stay clean, and remain clean for long periods of time when they understand it's their choice. Yeah. They are now responsible. Yeah. I say you're not responsible for your addiction, but you're responsible for your recovery. And to me, recovery just means being a better version of what you were yesterday. Yeah. If I can be a better guy today than what I was yesterday, I'm moving forward. Yeah, you've done well. I mean, yeah. the only person I'm in competition with is me. Yep. Yep. I'm not in competition with you or yep. Joe Blow down the road. Or, yep. Um, what you think of me is none of my business. Yep. Yep. What I think of you should come from a place of love and kindness. Yep. Even if I don't like you. Yep. Even if I don't like you because resentment is drinking poison hoping you die. Yep. Waste of time. Yep. You know? Um, it's just getting old is really nice. Yeah. Because you start to understand all the cliches. Yeah. And you start to really understand what they mean and how much freedom. See, I spent over fifteen years in prisons. Yeah. Over fifteen. I don't even want to count. But I have yep. mates who've done longer, a lot longer. Yeah. They say to me, "How many years you've done in prison?" I say, "I don't know, mate. I've, yeah. I've never sat down and counted. It's over yep. fifteen years." Yeah. And. The last time I was in prison, because I was working my program and I was so in tune with myself and I was helping so many people in jail yep. trying to get off drugs, I was as free in there as I ever have been. Yep. So it taught me that the yep. freedom was from within, yep. not from the walls outside, you know. Yep. You can't fix the problem that's inside me by bringing stuff outside me to fix it. Yeah. It has to come from within, you know, and that come from, I call it a spiritual awakening. Yeah. And spirits just love empathy, love empathy, compassion, understanding yep. of myself and other people. Yeah. And, you know, I honestly think that I'm at the prime of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Because I understand me. Yep. For the first time in 68 years, I can say, I have enough. Yeah. I'm fully content. I don't want that other car down the road. Yeah. I don't yeah. want that other girlfriend. Yeah. I don't need, yeah. you know, I don't need anything anymore. Yeah. I'm not against material things. I love material things. Yeah. But they don't dictate whether I feel good or bad. Yeah. Yeah. Today I'm driving a Toyota Corolla rent a yep. car. Yeah. It got me here the same as my Mercedes would have got me here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I've just got rid of an S class Mercedes, top of the range, yep. S63. Beautiful motor car. Yeah. But it didn't, didn't make like you it. happier. I didn't like it. Yeah. It's the top of the range Benz. It's like, yeah. oh, that's the top class, S-class Benz, yeah. convertible, matte grey. It was yeah. a beautiful car. Let me show it on, you know, because yeah. I'm going to put a new Corvette. Yes. Because I'm yeah. a Corvette sort of guy, you know. Yeah. I'm, you know, you can't take yeah. the street kid out of the street. Yeah, of course. You know? Yeah. And I, I don't want to pretend to be, and I say it all the time, I don't pretend to be a guru. Yeah, I just want to be me, and if they can help people, that's wonderful. Yeah, you, you are, man. You're, you know, a man of the street, but now you're a man of life experience and wisdom and helping. And like me, I'm 49 now. I'm 50 this year. I've been through some stuff over the years, and I'm in a point now where there's some soul searching to be done, and mm. I'm excited for it because I can see whether that's, you know, working through previous trauma or whatever yeah. and I can see the other side mm. and I know I'm going to learn from it and be a better person. And you can always just ring me and we'll talk to it. Yeah, yeah. Because but we'll do a dinner. Yeah, you know, <laughs> simple. So it's simple. Yeah. And I say most of my friends um, talk to me and because yeah. they know that one thing, I have no judgment. Yeah. yeah. Second thing, I have no memory. Yeah. I'm like a goldfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a, that's my choice. Yeah. I've had it all my life. Yeah. You know, since the police got me, I don't remember nothing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. So I've always had this lack of memory. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I've been, man, yeah. it's, inc it's insane to say this, you know, with my life that I lived. Yeah. I think I've been blessed. A hundred percent. You know, yep. I really do. Yep. I think I've been blessed. I've had the most incredible life. Yeah. I have a friend 
He spent 24 years in Thai prison. Wow. And he says to me all the time, he said, you live the life of a rock star without the shit music. <laughs> yeah, and he yeah, says to me all the yeah. time, that's his, that's his little joke. He says to me all the yep. time. He yep. goes, mate, because he, he's written, he's read yeah. my book. Yeah. And he said to me, mate, that's so censored. Yeah. I said, of course it's censored. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I said, I can't yep. write down. There's a yeah. lot of stuff that was in that yeah. book. Then he always says to me, you're the only guy I know that lived the life of a rock star yeah. without the shit music. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. You know, today is the thing that's important to me because yesterday's yeah. gone. Yeah. And today I have a beautiful family. Yeah. I have a beautiful relationship with myself. Yeah. I have good friends, quality friends. Yeah. I'm, I don't have a lot of friends. I'm not that guy. I have a lot yeah. of associates. Yeah. You know, when I opened Facebook, when I first came home, yep. and that, that, all that came out, you've got to remember, none of that was around when I went away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came home next to this Facebook, Instagram, yeah. and they give me this iPhone. I didn't even know where I yeah. was. And I'm like, what the yeah. fuck is this? Yeah. And all night it went beep, 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 beep. I didn't know how to yep. turn it off. Yep. Because all friend requests coming. Yeah. Because all people are all around the world. Yeah. I've gone on Facebook. All of a sudden it's like, yep. beep, beep, I'm getting friend requests. I didn't even yep. know what they were. Yeah. So, you know, I had 5,000 friends and. I sh we shut it down. I yeah. said, I can't do this. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. I yeah. shut it down. I closed it down. Now we've opened a new one for our company. Yeah. But I just couldn't do it. It was just like, yeah. it's too much. Yeah. It's too much. I just come from a place where I'd spent eight years. Yeah. And um, in isolation because I did all yeah. my maximum security. And um, I just found the world to become so false. Yeah. So materialistically yeah. bullshit. Look at my wonderful life. And, and they're standing in front of someone else's car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I just stand at the front of my Lambo. Yeah. And, and then they're catching yeah. the bus home. Yeah. You know, like it's this facade of, yeah. of you know, and I think it's, it's a sign of our future that if we don't get honest. Unfortunately, yeah. And we don't start taking responsibility yeah. for who we are and what we are. Yeah. And accepting that we are enough. I really, I really yeah. get fearful for my kids and yeah. you know the future generations. That, yeah. oh, Brian, actually, it's funny. I was fearful. In the last couple of years, I feel there's a movement in the world. I think we have a movement in the world where yeah. people are starting to realise it. Yeah, from this big shake-up, there's definitely it's gone crazy. Never go back to what it was. It'll be find some middle ground, but mm. new ground, and yeah. people are going to say, "No way, yeah. that's enough." The social media is a wonderful tool used properly. Tool. Used properly. It's not a life. No. Yeah. I see people, a whole family sitting down, no one's talking, yeah. no one's on their phone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, our kids, you know, we, we say, phone's off. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. My little boy used to react, now he's, now he's not reacting too bad. Yeah. Because he's got to a yeah. point now where he understands it. Yeah. Us going out in the pool is a lot more fun than sitting on, sure. on your silly iPad. For sure. You know, and he gets out there and we play for an hour and he's laughing and joking yeah. and. Yeah, no. Nah. But you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm privileged to come and talk to you. I actually thought I was coming to talk to you about stuff, but this is cool. We've had a good chat. Yeah, round two at some round point. Round two, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah, so so with with all of that, Ron, like this was totally off the cuff, no real yeah. plan. No, hey, what are we going to do? Blah yeah, blah yeah. blah. Um, but I know you've just come back from New Zealand. Yep. Um, and the truth about addiction is your Instagram page That's and your Instagram business. Instagram page and my business, yep. And you've got a, a book coming out, which will no doubt lead to other things. It's called the Born to the Lie of Crime. Yep. It says life. It's nice. L-I-F-E. It's nice. the L-I and the E in big yep. bold letters. And the yep. F's really small with a cross through it. Yep. It was supposed to be Born to the Life of Crime, but it's Born yep. to the Lie of Crime. Yep. And it's, it's, it's a really good book. It's, yeah. i tell you why it's a really good book, because it's the honest truth. Yep. Yep. And it's going to be really controversial. Yeah, because I'm talking about some of the biggest gangsters in Australia yeah. being yep. shitmen. Yep, yep. Telling the truth about who they really yeah. were, you know. Yeah. Because I know who they were because I was laying on the ground beside them <laughs> yeah. when we were being yeah. shot at. Yeah. You know, and they were cowards. Yeah. And other ones that were like, and I'm talking about some of the biggest names in Australian yep. crime in Melbourne. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. The godfathers of the bullshit. Yeah. You know, and I had one that laid on the ground and shot into the ground. He didn't even shoot at the car that was shooting at us. Then I had yep. another one robbed the bank that I set up for him while I was in prison and he yep. ripped me off and didn't pay yeah. me. You know, just really shit class yeah. actions yep. from the godfathers of crime. Yeah. I, I wrote it really so that the young people that read it and anyone that reads it realise that crime's not real. Yeah. Yeah. TV's not real. 
Yeah. The Sopranos is not real. Yeah. You know, yep. please don't get tied up and think that this rap videos aren't real. Yeah, this gangster yep. bullshit. You know, yep. and I, I shoot a lot. I'm, I still shoot a lot. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a very avid hunter, and yep. I do a lot of target shooting and competition. Yep. And that you don't shoot a gun like that, motherfucker. <laughs> yep. You don't shoot a gun like that. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's I, and my book's about the truth. You know, yep. and that's I call it. First of all, I call it the truth about nothing. Yep. And then um, I got a guy that's helped me rewrite it, John Killick, the guy that escaped yep. from jail in the helicopter. You yep. know, all he's done is rewriting and putting into paragraphs yep. and chapters. It's really my book. It still hasn't changed. Yeah. And he had he, he's, he's spruced it up a little bit yeah. here and there, which is really nice. Um, which you know I could have done, but it is the truth. It's it's a warts and all. It's not glorifying yep. gangsterism at yep. all. It's actually yep. telling the truth. It's, and you're probably from what some may consider the golden era yes. of crime. And I was born into it. Yep. Yeah. We were in amongst the proper gangsters. Yep. Then I went from being a gangster to a drug addict. Then I went from yep. being a drug addict to a drug importer. Yep. You know, and I travelled yep. the world. I've done yep. most of the things that people think is cool. Yep. And I can tell you right now, what I'm doing today is gangster. Yeah, yeah, yep. 100%. I put food on the table for my children. Yep. My wife's not afraid of me. My kids aren't afraid of me. Yep. Um, I'm not afraid of the police coming to my home. Yep. Everything we own, we own. Yep. You know, we don't harm people in any yep. way, physically, yep. emotionally, or spiritually. Yep. If I don't like you, I'll just walk away. Yep. You know, I don't. I'm not full of vengeance anymore, and my balls aren't bigger than your balls anymore. You know that <laughs> yeah. stuff that you know, like, yeah, you, know, you disrespected me, motherfucker. I'm yeah. gonna put a cap in your ass. You know, like, <laughs> yep. we never spoke like that. You know, we were just like, you know, we'll blow yep. your head off, you fucking asshole. Yeah. But um, you know, all that bullshit is not real. Yeah. And the, the, what is real, I call gangster, being a good father, yep. being a good husband, being a good friend, turning up, going to work, yep. providing, doing, yep. doing, doing your job. Yeah. You know, being a provider, and as I said, yeah, yep. my concept for male has changed so much yep. that a male is allowed to cry. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a male is allowed to say some days, I'm, "Baby, I'm not coping with this." Yeah. Sometimes work gets too hard, especially when you own your own business, yep. you own your own company. You're allowed to say, "Honey, this is fucking hard work," you know. And my wife yep. says to me all the time, "I'm so proud of you." Yeah. You know, and that's mate, that's yep. messy for me. Yeah. I never heard my father say to my mother, "I love you." Yep. In my whole life. Yeah. I never heard my father say, <clears throat> I love you to anybody. Yeah. That's sad when you think about it. You yep. know what I mean? Never to hear your father say, I love you. Yeah. You know, never to hear your father say, I'm proud of you. The only time my old man was proud of me was when I told him where there was safe or so you go and cut it. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's sad. You know, my children don't grow up like that. All yeah. my kids have gone to private schools, all my yep. kids have gone to good schooling. Yep. Um, I'm extremely proud of my oldest kids, you know them. Yep. You know, they've done so well. Yep. My kids are just, they're just pleasures. Yep. And that's got to be a reflection of me. For sure. I always For say sure. you can judge a person by the way his children treat him. Yep. Yep. You know, I hate my father. Yes. My only regret when my father died, I was in prison. Yep. And they never let me go to his funeral just to make sure he was dead. Yeah. That's yeah, sad. It's heavy, man. That's sad. Yep. That's really sad when that's, you know, yep. that is the honest truth. Yep. The only reason I would have went there, to, I would have wanted to go there and make sure, to, yep. make sure that he was dead, you know, yeah. and say, yeah, right, whack. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm yep. sorry it wasn't 30 years earlier. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah, but on a positive note, mate. Yeah. It's been a pleasure to come down and hang out and have a yep. chat. At the Sydney Tattoo Convention, look, Ron, I'd love you to come down. Freddie's going to be there. Yes, mate, yeah. We said we'd try and get um, get Greg over. Yeah, yeah, I'll get on to Greg and try to get him to come um, over. And maybe we can get you. I know you've got a bad thing about being a judge before, but yeah, you're yeah. a man of wisdom and yeah. everything now. Maybe you can judge oh, no, a couple of categories Those days us. I was actually uh, in the yeah. categories. You know, yeah. I was actually competing. <laughs> yep. I didn't want to be judging against guys <laughs> yep. that I was competing against. Yep. You know, I thought it was a bit unfair. Well, maybe only Ron can judge me. <laughs> only Ron can judge me. <laughs> yeah. That's it, yeah. No. No, no regrets. regrets. <laughs> I'm still going to get that tattoo on my neck, I think. No regrets. Oh, mate. Yeah, yeah. So, so myself. Mate, it's been an absolute oh, pleasure. Thank you, buddy. Um, Love you dearly. Yeah, likewise. likewise. And, uh, yeah, we'll do a part two where I'll talk to you about your obsessive compulsive behaviour. Yeah, it's it's real and it ain't slowing down. Yeah. I noticed. You know? I've noticed. <laughs> you know? it's, just, it's like a pimple on your ass. It just keeps growing. I've, I've actually surrendered to it. <laughs> and I'm just going. The fact with that it. it's just going to keep going. It's going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. So, and anyone that's listening on this podcast, 
Um, if you haven't been to Little Tokyo in Elizabeth Street, Sydney, get your ass down there and have a look at history and yeah. the future because this that's what this yeah. joint is this is yeah. history but it's also the future yeah i haven't seen a tattoo studio like this anywhere yeah. in the world it's yeah it's something else it's something yeah. really 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 special no i think i'm yeah. really proud of you mate and you know yeah no it mean, means a lot like for me now you know tomorrow i've got jeff rhodes in i'm i'm kind of found i was a little bit trapped in the middle of when I started tattooing, there were four kids my age tattooing. Yeah. When now, someone 25, there's like 200 people in Sydney tattooing together and they're all connected. So I've always felt like I've been in a little bit of no man's land. Now I'm too old for the young crew, but I was just old enough and came through that era where the older guys, 10 years or more, would give me that respect yep. and then go from there. So yeah, for me, it's just give back and yeah, past, present, and future. Yeah, no. I congratulate you and I yeah. I'm completely blown away. Yeah, thank I love you, it. Man. I love it. I yeah. This is something like a dream. This is something like yeah. you know, if I owned a shop Yeah. Well this, this is me just you know? creating my own reality. Yeah. And I've watched it. And I've yeah. watched it grow, you know. I've yeah. watched it from From Bondi Road. Bondi Road and and little twice yeah. the size of this room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, <laughs> you know. And and uh, you know, It's so funny I, now, we've just had a new artist come down from um up your way, mm -hmm. um, the coast up in Queensland, and she's moved into that apartment now. Oh, really? Yeah. Your yeah. old teddy yeah. studio. Yeah. All the stickers are still on the door and everything, and like, said, oh, this is where it all began, and she's wrapped. She's like, yeah. oh, man. Yeah, so cool. cool. Yeah, that's so. beautiful. All right, let's Thank go get dinner. Friend. Let's go. Thank you, Ron. Thank Love you, mate. mate. Love you, mate. I solemnly swear that I will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God.